Imagine observing yourself in a mirror that not only reflects light, but also time itself not looking at your face, but into the universe's infancy when existence was still wrapping itself within the first few breaths. That's just what the James Webb Space Telescope was designed to do. However, what it discovered when it probed further than anything prior to that was not infanthood it was not the cradle of the universe. This was a contradiction, an impossibility on a cosmic scale. And what it saw, what it revealed to us, has not only astonished astronomers but shaken the foundation of modern physics. For a long time, scientists thought they had a pretty good understanding of how the universe evolved. First came the Big Bang, followed by a dark age, then the steady, slow birth of stars and eventually life in galaxies. When we look further back, the simplest things should be their basic, faint particles, hydrogen clouds, chaotic, unformed space. But when Webb turned its golden mirrors toward a remote and allegedly quiet region of the sky, we were expecting to find vast black stretches of nothing more than darkness. Instead, it captured something that was never meant to be there at that point in time, a galaxy that was fully developed. Rather than a hazy blob or scattered gas, it was a complex star system, complete with spiral arms and a massive black hole at its center not just formed, but thriving. This was not a fluke. More and more data came in, galaxies emerging from that primordial shadow, fully structured, chemically mature, and stable under gravity. It was as if the cosmic clock had jumped ahead, skipping billions of years of gradual evolution and entering a period of impossible maturity. And with each observation, one terrifying question began to echo louder in scientific circles. What if everything we thought we knew about the beginning is wrong? When the Webb telescope first captured the image of what appeared to be an impossible galaxy over 13 billion years old billions of light years away, it was anticipated to be yet another dim, ancient smear of light, barely discernible from background noise. But instead, what stared back was nothing short of architectural elegance, spiral arms wrapped like ribbons of starlight, dense star clusters orbiting in harmony, and a bright core pulsing with energy. The galaxy was not growing, it was created. And not just a little bit. It appeared to be something we'd expect to find after the universe had been around for billions of years, not within the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang. To understand why this is so baffling, you have to know how galaxies are thought to evolve. In the early universe, there was little matter and it was unevenly distributed. Gradually, gravity pulled it together into collapsing clouds that formed stars, which then merged to form galaxies over enormous time scales. But what Webb saw suggested that this entire process had already completed far too quickly. Not only had that galaxy taken shape, but it had thrived. Astrophysics rules didn't allow this. It was like finding a fully grown ancient redwood tree sprouting from freshly planted soil. Even more perplexing this was not an isolated phenomenon. Webb uncovered numerous galaxies across different regions of the sky, all displaying organization, complexity, and maturity that were completely impractical according to our current understanding of cosmic timelines. This wasn't just a glitch in the telescope. The instruments were working flawlessly. What had gone wrong was the foundation of our theories. After analyzing the spectra, the fingerprints of light that reveal the elements within these galaxies, astronomers received yet another shock. Not only did these galaxies exist, but they contained traces of elements that shouldn't have been there yet, carbon, oxygen, iron. These elements do not appear from nowhere. They're forged in the hearts of massive stars and only released into space through supernova explosions. That process takes time. The first generation of stars, called Population 3 stars, produced only hydrogen and helium. Then they died, scattering their contents, and eventually, later generations of stars were enriched from birth with heavier elements. That sequence should have taken hundreds of millions if not billions of years. But here they were, galaxies less than 400 million years old, showing signs of multiple generations of stellar death and rebirth. That would mean that not only had the first stars formed and died, but the cycle had already repeated more than once. 
it would appear that the early universe was not awakening quietly, it was sprinting, forging, burning, and exploding in ways no one anticipated. The presence of these elements raises even deeper questions because these are not simply components for stars, they are the building blocks of planets, atmospheres, and potentially life. To find them so early is like stumbling across a thriving coral reef at the base of a volcano that only erupted yesterday. The timelines don't just feel rushed, they feel broken. Just when scientists thought things couldn't get more confounding, the center of one of these ancient galaxies provided the most bizarre surprise of all. It contained a supermassive black hole estimated to weigh more than a billion times as much as our sun. In today's universe, that would be incredible. But in the early universe, that's not just unlikely, it's cosmologically absurd. Black holes are thought to grow gradually, beginning as the remains of stars, then feeding for billions of years on gas, dust, and other stars. Even the most aggressive growth models can't explain such a massive black hole forming within just 400 million years after the Big Bang. It would be like finding a mature adult who was born within the last hour. The math doesn't work, and yet there it was. The gravitational signature was unmistakable, revolving stars, energetic emissions, and warped space around it all pointing to a gaping black hole. This black hole didn't develop, it arrived. Scientists are now entertaining radical theories that black holes at the beginning of the universe might have formed directly from the collapse of extreme density fluctuations or perhaps through the influence of dark matter or exotic particles accelerating their growth. But these are not tweaks to current models, they are entirely new blueprints for reality. What do you do when every observation defies the rules you've been taught? For many cosmologists, the answer is unsettling, you change the rules. Because the James Webb Space Telescope hasn't just shown us anomalies, it has revealed a universe that seems to be behaving in reverse, where complexity comes before simplicity and where ancient light once shined carries blueprints that ought not to be there. Now, some scientists think that dark matter, once thought to be inactive, may have played a more assertive role in determining the early universe. It's possible that the force of gravity helped construct structures that accelerated galaxy expansion. Others suggest that time itself may have flowed differently in those early moments, stretched and warped in ways we can't yet detect, enabling entire epochs of evolution to pass in what appears to us as fleeting flashes. There is also the most terrifying concept of all, perhaps the beginning of the universe was similar to the one we see today. Maybe the level of complexity is not the end of cosmic development. Perhaps it's the beginning. As the data kept flowing, researchers began to observe something even more bizarre, something unrelated to the quantity or brightness of these galaxies, but rather in the forms they repeated. Using deep learning algorithms, researchers discovered that the way these ancient galaxies were distributed followed a very specific, repeating mathematical ratio, a strangely familiar one, the spiral of gold. This went beyond aesthetic structure into a concealed geometry that extended over billions of light years, connecting galaxies and star systems in elegant alignment. The design of matter itself seemed to behave in a fractal way, as if the universe had been coded from the beginning with a pattern that echoed across all scales. It was more than coincidence. The spiral arms, the rotational symmetry, the orbital distances, the high-resolution images from Webb revealed that our beliefs were wrong. It's possible that chaos in the early universe may have been consistent, predictable, and marked by similar fingerprints. But fingerprints of what? A fundamental role beyond physics, or something far more alarming, evidence of intentionality embedded into spacetime itself. One of the most contentious findings from Webb came not from a galaxy or a black hole, but from the hazy chemical trace left in an apparently empty region of space, an ancient void between stars thought to be sterile. The spectrometers on the telescope found something inexplicable, complex organic molecules, not merely methane or ammonia, but polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the building blocks of amino acids. That, in turn, implies life. These chemicals didn't belong to planets. They weren't swirling inside stars. 
They were drifting, aimless, yet somehow intact after 13 billion years. This raised alarms because the implications reached beyond biology. It meant that the ingredients of life had existed nearly since the beginning, not formed later in solar systems like ours, but seeded into the fabric of the cosmos almost immediately. If that's true, then life is not a random alignment. It is a constant, a feature and a thread that connects the universe from the start. The unimaginable, it seems, was not limited to space. It was microscopic. Then came the image that silenced even the majority of skeptics. Deep within a cluster of high redshift galaxies, Webb detected a formation that was impossibly perfect six galaxies positioned like petals around a central object, spaced at equal distances, rotating in near-synchronized orbits like some cosmic dance choreographed with purpose. Scientists dubbed it the flower. Despite their efforts to explain it away as a statistical anomaly or a gravitational coincidence, no natural model could reproduce its precision. It was an astronomical sculpture frozen in light from a time before Earth had formed. Some proposed gravitational lensing. Others suggested quantum symmetry from the turbulence at the beginning of the universe. But a few quietly wondered whether this might be something entirely different. A compass, a calling card left in plain sight, meant only to be seen once humanity's eyes had evolved enough to perceive it. And finally, the most chilling theory to emerge, that the very act of looking at these old galaxies might be influencing them retroactively. Known as the observer effect in quantum physics, it explains how simply measuring something can alter it. But what if this rule doesn't just apply to particles? Imagine the universe, on an incomprehensible scale, being capable of paying attention, and that by building James Webb and peering into the early cosmos with unprecedented clarity, we didn't just uncover secrets. We awakened something. Once laughed off as philosophical noise, this theory is now taken seriously by a small group of physicists who see patterns in web data changing based on how and when they are processed. Some images appear to subtly shift over time, as if the universe itself is reacting to being observed. If true, it would mean we're not just explorers. We are participants, co-authors of reality itself. What the James Webb Space Telescope detected was never just about stars, dust, or black holes drifting through time. It was about truth, immense, ancient, intricate, woven into the fabric of everything. To witness it is to feel the scaffolding of reality tremble beneath your feet. We didn't just see the unimaginable. We unlocked it, not by force, but by daring to ask the kinds of questions no civilization before us had the technology or madness to pose. Chemistry to advanced for galaxies. Patterns to perfect. Signals to aware. Webb's revelations suggest not only that the universe is more mysterious than we imagined, but that it may be aware of our curiosity. Perhaps, for the first time in history, the universe spoke back, not in words, but in light, in pattern, and in echoes that stretch beyond time itself. Possibly, we have not found the outer limits of the universe, but its memory and its thoughts of us. So now the question isn't, what did Webb see? The real question is, what is the web? If you were shaken by this, if the patterns seemed to sharp, the timing to perfect, the revelations to synchronize to be random, then sign up because we are not simply gazing at the stars. We are following the response. Turn on notifications, the next signal may already be incoming. Share this with someone who still believes the universe is silent. Comment below. How do you feel? Did web observe or awaken?